Mental Wellness Monday. Each week we're going to pick a different topic, okay? And today we want to talk about how the holidays really impact our mental health. Yeah, for many of us, the holidays bring feelings of joy and happiness, but the busyness, the stress, and sometimes high expectations can really weigh heavy on us more than we may realize. Rates of anxiety and depression tend to rise during this time of year. So joining us for this conversation is Dr. Thea Gallagher. She's a clinical psychologist and assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry at NYU Langone. So good morning to you, Dr. Gallagher. Thanks for being here for this new segment. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So for people who find themselves really overwhelmed or anxious during the holidays, and a lot of people feel it, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that can be done easily to help manage those feelings? And first and foremost, let people know, hey, it's okay to feel these things. Yeah, it's absolutely okay to feel these things. There's like higher expectations. I think the important thing is to figure out what exactly is overwhelming you. And I usually encourage people to do what we call like non-judgmental observation. Just look at yourself a little bit from the outside in and say, what aspects of the holiday season is like really making me feel stressed? Is it the expectations I'm putting on myself? Is it the expectations others are putting on me? Where can I set boundaries? Where can I build in self-care? And where can I also build in some breaks? Because it can be, you know, a lot all at once um, for like a concentrated period of time. You know, I always expect to worry <laughs> during the holiday season, but there's a specific therapy technique that's actually called planned worrying. Can you explain what that is exactly and how it works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite techniques because, you know, a lot of us will wake up at like three in the morning and we'll say, oh my gosh, I have to get all this stuff done. Where's yep. my list and that? But you're not going to actually accomplish anything at three in the morning and you're probably just going to lose sleep and make yourself more stressed out. So you can say, you know what, when I wake up at 830, I am going to tackle that at that point. I can worry all I want at 830. And so just kind of giving yourself a space and a time to say, OK, at that point, I'm going to start writing down all the things I need to do or feel like I need to do. And then what we want you to engage in is more problem solving and mm -hmm. less of that like merry-go-round of doom of just worrying and not actually doing anything yeah. about the problem. Well, yeah, and, and then it's important to really set boundaries, too, when it comes to protecting what's going on in your head. So what does that mean? How do you set those boundaries? Well, I mean, I think the setting of them is not the hardest part. I think the, the hardest part is knowing that you might get some pushback, right? Your family might want to spend every waking moment with you. Your kids might want to do this and that. I think just thinking about what boundaries could really help me and what feels reasonable. Um, I can't do everything and I can't do everything all at once. So where can I say no? What can I say yes to? And then also expect that, especially sometimes with change around the holidays, family members or others, loved ones can have maybe some difficulty with you setting those boundaries. But just realize if you set the boundary for yourself that you know is gonna make you happier and healthier, they're gonna wanna be around you more in the end anyway. So I think, um, you know, in some ways when, we, when we're kind of selfish or care about ourselves, we're actually ultimately mm -hmm. more selfless in the long run because we're a better human being. Right. Yeah, well, the holidays are a happy time for a lot of people. For some, the holidays could really trigger feelings of grief, sadness. Say, say you lost a loved one around this time of year or maybe you lost one during the pandemic. And, and this is the first time you're, you're bringing extended family back together. So how do you manage those kinds of feelings in a healthy way? Well, the unhealthy way is to kind of avoid them, hmm. push them back, not think about them. And the healthy way is to let yourself have those feelings um, and to realize that they have a shelf life. You know, they're not going to last all day, every day. You're not going to be in necessarily some grief spiral if you let yourself feel those feelings. And a lot of the ways that we even talk about grief and loss is, a, is in ways of like bittersweet, that we can both be sad about the loss, but also remember some of the good times that we've had in the past. And I think sometimes people are afraid if I trigger those memories of sadness, like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna recover, I'm not gonna come out of that, but I think you'll be surprised at how therapeutic it can be sometimes to reflect on old memories, pictures, times that you had with that person, um, and really also, you know, remember to think about some of the good times mm. that have been had, but also ride the wave of some of the sad feelings as well. Right. They won't last forever. Yeah, and I, I think for some folks, you know, it's it could be also the fear or the anxiety of, I guess, the unknown of what comes with a holiday, right? You go into a party with your family and there could be this idea where well, we're gonna eat a lot, we're also gonna drink a lot, right? <laughs> and then when you drink a lot, well, the inhibitions get loose and people start asking questions that they don't necessarily wanna answer. And so you go into a party and you're like, oh God, they're gonna ask me about the job and their kids and family and blah, Why blah, 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 blah. Married? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> all those questions come your way. So when there's food and alcohol present, how do you kind of navigate all of that? <laughs> You know, I think if you already know for yourself too, like some topics that are just off limits, you don't really want to talk about it. It's totally okay to say, you know, I don't really want to talk about that. 
or find a way to even like move on to the next topic or oh that's like a long story it kind of bums me out to you know even get into it but everything you know i'm doing the best i can with what i have i think that sometimes you know just observing our eating and drinking behavior around the holidays can be really helpful because sometimes i think you know it's just part of the culture it's the cultural norm you eat and drink and then you don't have this recovery time so i think also thinking about how can i have this recovery time what actually makes me feel good and you know it might not be about some harsh rigid rule that i don't overeat and i don't over drink because that just kind of is naturally part of what happens during the season but i think being a little bit more intentional and mindful of how you yeah. actually feel afterward and where you can build in those breaks and where you can even maybe set some boundaries for yourself. But what about those who turn to the alcohol to help with the feelings of anxiety, right? Because they're like, okay, well, that will that'll, that'll still help me. This will help me get over it. Yeah, right. It actually won't. So that's the, probably the worst thing you can do for your anxiety um, is, you know, using a substance to kind of push through or white knuckle through. Again, maybe going back to that thought of like, you might feel uncomfortable for a little while. There might be high emotions, but also like, you know, sometimes I tell people, think about yourself in your own bubble, right? You know, you, you have a voice in the room as well. And another person has a voice in the room as well. You, both of your voices are powerful. So if you're feeling anxious, like I'm gonna get bulldozed, it could even be helpful to do some role playing with like a loved one or say, I know they're gonna ask me about this. How do I respond in a way that feels authentic to me without just kind of pounding drinks to like white knuckle it through this event that's causing <laughs> right. stress or anxiety. <laughs> Great advice. Great advice. Thanks so much, Dr. Gallagher, for being with us this morning. We appreciate that Thank advice, especially as we're nearing Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That's just a week away. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again. <laughs>